Hey guys, so today I'm going to go over Tmux and how to set it up to get kind of that Emacs feel. And by Emacs feel, I mean to feel like you're using tools that are part of a greater ecosystem. And naturally, you won't have that tight coupling that you get with Emacs, but if you're having to SSH a lot, or you're more of a NeoVim fan, or in my case, um, I'm trying to migrate a away from Emacs with my programming, just use it for my note taking, especially because I have to use a Windows laptop for work with WSL, and Emacs through WSL is just pretty glitchy, but having the Ubuntu terminal in Windows with um, NeoVim built from source and Tmux, you can kind of get the same experience that you get on a Linux laptop without um, a lot of the glitchiness or maybe delays and just kind of irritating configuration hell that you have to go through. Um, so just to give a quick example of the type of workflow that I usually like to do, um, this is just a class from this Python CLI that I was writing to help track your workouts for all the Linux open source gigachads out there. So go here. So this is the parent directory. And as you can see, I have local imports. Um, so when I start my Python REPL, I'll want to do it from here. When you're using the Emacs Python mode, interactive Python, it'll automatically look for the project root and start it there. So for here, you just have to be a little bit more conscious about what you do that. Um, but what I can do is using Vim Slime, I can get probably about you know 80% or more of the functionality of Emacs with 20% of the configuration back to the Pareto principle. So here I just ran this file, all the imports worked, I can see that I'm able to get that module that's imported as a local path, and I can do, or I can instantiate one of the classes. I'll just give it a fake date. It's a list of a list. Give it some data there. You can see, perfect. So I'm able to get that working. So I'm able to get most of the functionality that I want um, using uh, more individual tools kind of following that Unix philosophy and one of the things that I've noticed is um, Tmux is kind of like a blank board that you can stack the individual bricks if the bricks are certain programs and that kind of gives you a nice backing board for all of these Unix style tools. Uh, I guess an example of that would be if I go back here so I'm running my program and let's say I want to let me do that again hit the wrong key binding let's say I want to come here and I want to do some get stuff and then instead of using maggot I can use this I can also use NeoGit which I really like but I just prefer lazy git um, and just using it in the terminal that I like in this case kitty um, so you have that functionality and it feels very Emacsy. it feels very tightly integrated, but you are still kind of following that Unix philosophy of one tool, one job, do it well. Um, and in that sense, you get a lot of the benefits of something like NeoVim, which is a great text editor, but lacks a lot of the interactive features of Emacs. So you get a little bit of the best of both worlds. I'd say this is offers worse extra functionality, but better text editing than just Emacs on its own. So I went through the demo, just some of the functions that I added, so slime buffer, just send the whole buffer via slime, which will send it to anything. And then some of the key bindings I wrote for that. And the Tmux config that I'm using right now. So for me personally, I like control X as the prefix key. And you can see a lot of the key bindings here if you do control X question mark. Um, using R to source the config. And then for splits, I just like using the same key for both. So if I don't use shift, it'll split um, one way. If I use shift, it'll split the other way. And let me see here. And then I feel like I don't need this just because I'm not overriding control L, but um, if you are, you can use this so that you can still clear the terminal, even if you're using control L. And uh, just some simple rebindings. Instead of using the NeoVim plugin, um, I found that it didn't work in certain keys, maybe because it was conflicting with something, some package or plugin that I had. To keep it simple, I just have Control X and then any of those other directions. Um, for my theme, I'm just using Tmux Power because it 
seemed like the most minimal with the easiest customizations. For instance, I wanted uh, Grovebox green. You can just use that. Don't want any fancy icons. And then just like the kind of generic syntax from certain languages with the, the carrots, I just kind of like that for the user and then the session number. And one of the things if you're using NeoVim that you definitely want to do is you want to set the escape time to zero. Um, I don't think everybody has this problem, but I found that there was a slight delay when I was trying to exit insert mode, and adding this took care of that. And then last line, just getting those plugins working. And one of the things that I think is very underrated in terms of uh, like markdown notes with NeoVim, especially with Vim Slime, is you get this really great syntax highlighting, so you might as well use it for something. And uh, let me just go over some of the key bindings. So prefix key Q shows me the pane numbers. Prefix, uh, prefix W shows me the windows. So I can go through there and see everything. Um, and what's nice about that is in Emacs, when you're looking through buffers, it just gives you the name. So this is like a kind of like looking through buffers in Emacs, but you get to see what's on each buffer, what's on each window. Um, it shows you each individual pane. And what I can do here is I can start sending text and printing it. So I have these interactive code blocks in Markdown for if I'm taking notes. Uh, back in university when I had to do a lot of functional programming for certain classes like Racket, uh, if I wasn't using Emacs, if I was more of a Markdown note taker, instead of trying to learn Emacs, I'd probably just use this and use Vim Slime with Racket if I didn't want to use um, Dr. Racket. And I'd have a perfect note taking setup I could even do my homework practice problems in Markdown. It's just a, uh, it's not nearly as good as something like org mode with uh, OB and Babel, but it's, it's close enough that I wouldn't switch if I didn't already have a very streamlined note-taking process in Emacs. Um, and that's it for today. Just wanted to go over this. Um, had a little bit of extra time this week, so I thought I'd learn something new. Looked into some of the Tmux stuff. I might look into scripting it a little bit more, trying to write some custom functions, especially to tightly couple with NeoVim. And uh, I think one of the things that I've been doing more is I used to really rely on the embedded terminal in NeoVim. And I'm trying to decide if I want to fully, I think abandon it is too strong of a word. But here I've got functions to bring it up and to oops, I could change something, make it persist. So if I do like this, and I come here, it's the same one that comes up. Um, so I do have a lot of added functionality there. I'll do some of these guys here, but nothing too crazy um, right now. Maybe it'll get crazier in the future, I'll see. But just wanted to do a mini rant and demo about Tmux and how you can use that to replace Emacs in places where you can't really use it. Or if you are a NeoVim user, but you feel like you're missing a little bit, you want more of a maybe IDE feel, mini operating system feel for those people that agree that Emacs is like its own little operating system. Uh, that's it for today. Thank you guys. Let me know if there's anything else you'd like to see.